there are a couple things that I want to review, but I've already covered them in the videos. And so if I start talking and you feel comfortable with what I'm saying, obviously just kind of scan through until you get to the next part of the lecture. We are basically done our lecture on anchor points and directional lines. So the next few um, the next few slides will just be kind of reviewing the things we've already talked about. And the first is the idea of modifying your vector art. And so in order to modify your vector art, what you do is you modify your anchor points and your directional lines. And that could be things that you created with the shape tool, the line tool, um, the pen tool, the pencil tool, anything that you would create vector art with. Uh, when you're modifying them, there's kind of different levels to the modifications. If you use your black mouse, you could make it, you could drag it and make it bigger or smaller. You could rotate it. If you use your white mouse, your direct selection tool, you can edit the anchor points. You can click them and you can kind of move them back and forth. And if they already have handlebars or those directional lines that we've been talking about, you can kind of swing those directional lines back and forth until they create the curve that you're looking for. At a more heightened level, once you get better at modifying your vector art, um, you can use the tools that are embedded within the pen tool in Canvas. And they are the add anchor point tool, the delete anchor point tool, and the convert direction point tool. To me, the main benefit of the add anchor point tool is if you kind of forgot something and you're like, oh, I need an anchor point there to be able to do whatever you're trying to, to create, you can add things that are missing. The benefit of the delete anchor point tool is that it will keep your path continuous. So in my example, I showed you that you could select an anchor point with your white mouse and you can hit the delete key and that'll effectively delete your anchor point, mission accomplished. But what happens is it blows a hole in your path that creates an open path instead of having a closed path. And most times you want to have a continuous path. You don't want to break up your path. And so if you use the delete anchor point tool, you can get rid of unwanted anchor points, but your path will be continuous and it will just keep flowing through as if you hadn't really blown a hole in it like you would with the delete key. The convert directional point tool works by converting your directional point. If it currently is angular or it has no curve, you can convert it to be curvy. Or if it has a curve, you can get rid of the curve if you don't want it. Remember, every anchor point has two options. You have the curve coming in to the anchor point and you have the curve leaving the anchor point. And so you can have two handlebars or directional lines for every anchor point. I highly recommend using the convert direction point tool in conjunction with the white mouse or your direct selection tool. And so you'll select the anchor point that you really are working with and you'll see does it have those directional lines or does it not have those directional lines, those handlebars. And if it has them and you want to get rid of them, you'll just click them with the convert directional point tool. And if it doesn't have them and you want to add them, you can click and drag to pull out uh, directional lines. Now, every anchor point has two handlebars, and so you can choose to have a curve coming in but a straight line going out, meaning that instead of having two directional lines, you just want one. When you convert your direction point to from angular to being curved, automatically you have to have two handlebars. And so what you can do is after you pull out the two handlebars, you just click on the one that you don't want. It will convert that handlebar from being a curve, aka a handlebar, and it will get rid of it to make it angular. An open path and a closed path is a specific decision that you make for the artwork that you're creating. And most times you're going to want to have a closed path, but sometimes it's appropriate to have an open path. And so my two examples here illustrate an open path and a closed path. On the top I have an open path and it kind of gives a way different look than the bottom image which has a closed path and I didn't close my path and what I did was I said, oh, I forgot to close it. InDesign, will you close it for me? and it basically just drew a line from the first anchor point I create on the left to the last anchor point and connect them in between. Now there might be a time and place for an open path. For example, maybe I'm making a chart and the chart is illustrating the ups and downs of the economic cycle of whatever I'm making the chart for. Or it's showing the, the stock market value of some company. And so I have this arrow and at the end it would have like a down arrow. It's going down and we're losing money. And maybe the top illustration is better for that because at the end I want to put an arrow. If I connect it I can't have an arrow pointing down. Um, on the bottom example I have a closed path and so instead of looking more like a chart it looks more like mountains. And so maybe if I'm trying to make it look like mountains I'd want to have a closed path but if I was trying to make it look more like a chart and put an arrow pointing a direction um, then I would have the open path. 
you can always change your path direction. And so I have taken the artwork that was on the previous slide, and I added an arrow via the strokes panel, and I had it and it was pointing. Uh, for some reason when I created it, I must have started on the right hand side, and I click, 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 click to create the line. And when I chose to add an arrow to the end, I was expecting it to be on this end down here and point downward. But when I added it, it was on the wrong side. If you go to the object menu path and then choose reverse path, like is on the screen here, you can change the direction of your path. And there, there's a reason to do that and a reason not to do that. And I'm going to open up InDesign and show you. Um, but always keep in mind that it changes the whole path. And so if you have text on it, your text will become backwards because it's flipping the whole path. And so let's go to InDesign here. And so I'm going to recreate the example that is in the slideshow. It's mountains. And I created the mountains backwards for some reason. And I decided that I wanted to make the stroke really fat, like in the example. So on the strokes panel, I increase the weight. And then I wanted, let's do, it should be angular. Um, I wanted to add a little arrow indicating that the stock market was going down in my illustration. And so I went to the line. Uh, starting and ending points here, and I chose the ending point to be an arrow pointing down. Let's, that's an ugly arrow. Let's choose a different arrow. And when I did that, I went, oh gosh, it's on the wrong side. And so one thing you can do is you can just switch it. So this is my uh, ending point and this is my starting point, even though I mentally kind of view them the other way. If I change the starting point to have that uh, arrow and then I get rid of the arrow on the ending point I could create the same scenario. Um, you can also go to the object menu choose paths and then you can reverse your path and then the beginning of your path becomes the end of your path. Um, keep in mind that um, that may not always work for what you're working for. It may not even be the easiest. If I added it to the wrong side I think it's probably easier in this example to just switch the starting and the end point um, via the stroke panel. Let's give this a fill color so you can see like in the example. Now some people might say instead of, let's give it a fill color again, instead of going through all that work why don't you just flip the whole thing horizontally. And so I'm gonna make a copy of this. This is my favorite key command. If you have something selected with your black mouse and you use the option key, watch how the cursor is gonna change. It's gonna be a white and a black mouse. If you hold the option key down and you click and drag, you can make a copy of something. And so you may have found at this point in the semester that on your control bar at the top of the screen, there is an option to flip your uh, object horizontally or flip it vertically. And so some of you might say, well, why don't you just flip it? So grab the, the mountains, hit the flip horizontal button, and then you're flipped. And this doesn't work for two reasons. And First is why I, I duplicated my, my artwork. Can you see that there's a very specific angle to the chart that I made? If I flip it horizontally, then I end up with a different look altogether. The mountains are not going in the same uh, direction. But let me show you something else about flipping things horizontally and vertically. If I go back to another example that, that we were working on earlier, where you have a circle and maybe it has a big fat stroke on it, and you clicked on it to make it a text box and whoops I did, definitely did not want to quit. I'm going to do command A select all and we change the typeface and make it bigger and then we'll hit enter a couple times because we haven't really talked too much about object text frame options Okay, we're going to go with that for now. If you take this shape and you reflect it horizontally, basically what happens is it pivots the entire thing around an imaginary axis. And so what's going to happen is you're basically going to see it from behind. Like you're seeing the front of a coin, and now you're going to flip it sideways, and you're seeing the back of the coin. And so when you did that, you can't even read what it says because, because it says yay. Let me type Jessica. And so... 
it flips it and you're basically seeing the back. And so you need to be careful when you're doing things like, let's undo until we get all the way back to my mountains here. You need to be careful when you're doing things like this because if you are going to put text inside here for whatever reason, maybe you have all these O's and ones for some binary code for whatever reason you're working on. Um, all the letters are backwards. So I'm going to put a four, five, six, seven, eight, so you can see. Um, when we zoom in, you can see everything's backwards. And so when you're going to, to change direction of a path or you're going to flip something, always consider what the ultimate effect of whatever you're choosing to do um, will cause.